everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over today's two-game NHL slate. Um, first of all, you'll note that it starts at 8 p.m., so it is a late start. And you'll also notice that it's only a two-game slate. But I'm still going to go through the same process that I do with all the slates. Again, just for no other reason to give you guys a continued look at how I build lineups and as, as I learn how to do it better and hopefully pass that on to you and uh, hopefully teach you guys how to be better players. So uh, what we're going to do is the same process as always. First, we're going to take a quick look at the team totals. Then we're going to look at my sheets. Then we're going to look at the stack tool. And then we're going to use Saberson. We're going to build a uh, one hand-built lineup using my sheets. Then we're going to use Saberson to build a portfolio of lineups. Now, it is a two-game slate, so it's a little bit different. It's not as important to get four or five-man stacks in. Um, but nonetheless, it's processed, so it's the same thing. So let's look. take a look. First of all, you'll notice that there's a huge standout here at Toronto at 3.8 team total, which is you know a full half a goal better than anybody else. You have the Kings at 3.3, Vancouver 3.2, and then a big drop to Nashville at 2.7. Um, so we're going to imagine that Toronto is going to get the majority of the fantasy points, or at least projected, followed by LA and Vancouver, followed by Nashville. It's not always that easy, but that's at least a way to start. Uh, next thing that we do is we go into the sheets. Now, again, these are my you know, collaboration of, of, of fantasy point projections uh, rated by fantasy, fantasy points, point per dollar, sheets value score. Uh, also has ownership uh, projections over here, uh, the even strength line and the power play line. So normally what we do is we try to find guys that are on the same team on the same line. Because in hockey, you know, correlation is king. And while, yes, it is still important to do that on a two-game slate, we don't quite have to be as big of a stickler. You know, if we find two guys that rate highly together, that's almost good enough. Three guys that rate well together, that's almost definitely good enough on a two-game slate. And if you can find a great four-game, four-teams, uh, four-man stack, that's terrific. But this is what I see when I just first look at this. Um not surprisingly, uh, Austin Matthews is the top-rated guy. Um, and, yeah, if you could get in all these Toronto guys in the power play line, that, that would be nice, but they're all really expensive. The, the thing that I do notice is, first of all, you have uh, Kuzmenko is a very, very cheap one-off from Vancouver at 4200 And now he is paired with Elias Patterson, who's also – on the same second even strength line and first power play line. Um, so that's probably a really good two man. And if you don't play Patterson, you can still play Kuzmenko as a as a decent one off. Next thing I notice is Kempe is pretty, you know, reasonable, I guess, at 5,900 and rated really high. And then you have Dubois, who's not on the same even strength line, but he is on the power play line again. So what you could do is do a power play stack, something like Kempe, uh, Dubois, and who else is, uh, Fiala, and Kopitar. And that's actually pretty reasonable with respect to uh, to pricing. So that's, uh, that's something you probably should consider. The other thing is that all the goalies are cheap, including our, our favorite DFS goalie, uh, uh, Saros, he always seems to face a lot of shots, which is usually good. And sometimes he, he saves them all. Sometimes he doesn't, but sometimes he does. And what's cool about this is that Vancouver, that Nashville is playing Vancouver. Uh, I guess Vancouver is not projected to be as good. So usually I'd like to play Saros again when he's against the chalk other team. Like if, he, if Saros was uh, playing Toronto, I would certainly put him in. I might anyway. So with that said, let's try to build a lineup based on that information. So what are we trying to do? We're going to try to either play that L.A. Uh, power play stack. Probably not going to be able to get to Toronto. Probably not even going to try. Um, and then we'll probably get to uh, L.A. So L.A. And then maybe this two-man from Vancouver. Now, all these guys look to be pretty highly owned. Um, which, listen, it's a two-game slate, whatever. But uh, 
we're not worried about that here. We'll, we'll worry about that when we use Sabre Sim to build like the MME high upside lineups. But let's 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 put these LA guys in. What the hell? Um, let's put in a where'd it go? Where did my lineup creator go? Okay. So let's just start with LA. Uh, we'll put in the guys that I mentioned. So that would be Kempe, um, Dubois. Was it Kopitar? Let me just see. Yeah, Kopitar and Fiala. Put the double center in and put Fiala in. So now we're 5,500 a man. We'll put in a goalie. Let's put in uh well, let's not put in Sorrow yet because I want to play that 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 two man from Vancouver that I liked. So that would be Kuz Kuzumenko and was it Patterson? Is that it? Patterson comes in over here. So we could do this really, really easily. We could pick some other goalie. And as you can see, I'm not really particular as what my goalie selection is, but I, excuse me. I guess put Demco in for now. And now we have a full 4K that we can play. They can't just play LA and Vancouver skaters, but I think it's probably wise unless there's a really strongly rated defenseman to take from those teams. So Josie's 7,400. It's not like he's rated that high. What you can do is just play Quinn Hughes from that Vancouver line And leave yourself a $2,800 one-off. You could do that. Or what else can you do defensively? You could play Klinberg as a one-off from Toronto. Or you could play Dowdy. So that's what I probably want to do. Because he's cheaper. We'll play Dowdy. And now we just need a $3,500 one-off. So we're now we're going to run a 5-2 with L.A., And any old $3,500 defender will do. This guy, this guy, I mean, anybody really. Well, we should be a little bit more circumspect like with our choice. If we played Klinberg, then we'd have to go down at goalie. Right now, who do I have? 7,900? So like, if we did play a pretty well-projected Klinberg, then we'd have to go down to $7,300 goalie. We'd be playing LA, the LA goalie against our skater. And I think that's okay. This is all we have is Klinberg. I think we could actually get away with this. Do something like this. Um, and this is a pretty reasonable. I mean, this is a six. This is a big LA stack here. Maybe it's a little bit too risky, but it definitely looks pretty strong. Okay, let's uh, let's pull up Saberson. Well, before we do that, let let let's see what what would happen if we did try to get these Toronto guys in. Let's see if we try to build with 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 Toronto expensive guys. Like, what kind of troubles we run into? So if we played uh, Matthews and then we played uh, Marner and, ne and, and Nylander, um, for openers, we are going to have to play that Kuzmenko cheapo. I mean, we just have to do it anyway to save the money. Even if we built the most cheapest here, 2,200, man, we're not going to be able to do this. Oh, we have Patterson. Um, I guess we could. You know, if we put Klinberg in as part of this stack, you can get a four-man from Toronto, and then kind of cheapo can we get center-wise. Dubois 5K, that's a little too much. But he's the cheapest of them all. I mean, I could play Pia Suter at 2,600. Um, it's just really hard. 
if we played a 5K, then we'd have to do a 2,500. Uh, is there two 2,500 hour punts? I mean, it's actually, there are a couple. Like Jordan Spence from LA. And we're playing against our goalie. And then another one we could play. Who's 2,500? Cole Smith, maybe. From the second second line winger from, from Nashville, possible. So, I mean, you could do it. You know, if you really like Toronto, I mean, you could jam this in. And I'll tell you this. They get five goals. And these guys get three of them. And that's pretty good. Um, but in either case, it looks like this Dubois is going to fit in no matter how we play. And this Kuzmenko guy is definitely going to fit in no matter how we play. All right, let's go. Uh, let's pull up Saber Sim and let's see what, what they have to say about all this. So we're going to upload my sheets into uh, Saber Sim. And we'll run a couple of builds. And we'll see what we come up with here. All right. So we're going to build, I don't know, 50 lineups just, just for fun. We'll see what we get. And while this is running, I'll show you what the stack tool looked like. Not surprisingly, you have Toronto at the top. And then Vancouver, LA, Nashville. That's when you ran them by raw points. When you rate them by value, still Toronto, then Vancouver, LA. Again, this is on a two game slate, you're not going to get as much value out of the stat tool. But I will say that Toronto is relatively low owned because it's hard to get them in. finalizing the lineups and I don't like to pause while this is going on. I know it's bad content, but I like you guys to see how long this takes. So our initial builds actually give us like 90% Toronto. Um, um, as a matter of fact, a whole bunch of six man Toronto's playing all the cheapos. And you know, listen, there's certainly some wisdom to that. The other thing I would notice is that, well, I want to try, I want to run a contest simulation. And what this is doing, for those of you that have not seen this before, we're going we're gonna to compare this set of lineups that we built to a field of lineups that represents what the field should play. And what that's going to do is calculate ostensibly the ROI of the best ROI lineups against what the field is actually playing. So it takes into account leverage and projected stuff, projected ownership and things like that. So let's run these, run the contest sim. This doesn't take that long. Now, again, these contest sims are available literally everywhere. I mean, all the main sites have them now. Saber Sim was the first, but whatever. They're, I'm sure they're all very similar. Although I'm, it's kind of ignorant for me to say that. I mean, because I didn't dive into the, the nuts and bolts of the algorithms, but I'm just kind of trusting them right now. All right, so let's see what the, um, what I call, I call the top shelf. I didn't mean, I meant to call it kick save. Nonetheless, uh, well, did I do the top shelf? Yeah. Contest sim settings. I want to make sure I did this right. I want to do the kick save. Payout structure. Kick save. That's what I wanted. I thought I called it. Did I do this right? Sorry about this, guys. This is bad, but... And this one is, 
Oh, it is the kick save. Okay. So I call the top shelf, but it really is the kick save. So when I do that, these stacks seem a little more, I don't want to say normal, but uh, I guess not as much uh, Toronto and more LA, which uh, makes a lot of sense. As a matter of fact, I'd be more inclined to use these than um, than the ones that are all just heavy on the Toronto, just because, I don't know, I just think, that there's, I think at the end of the day, I think Toronto is going to get a decent amount of ownership. Uh, nonetheless, so what I would do is I would save these to my contest. I've already pre-entered, so I would just put the lineup, uh, the dummy lineups in here. I would fill these. I'll put unique random. Actually, let's put unique rank. So it's going to be unique, but it's going to be judged by the ranking of these lineups. And then what we're going to do is we're going to build a that single entry lineup here as well. And what we have to do is we actually have to make this the top shelf structure, which is this. Let's call it TS. We will rerun the sim. I want to see what this looks like. Now, my observations when I do this is when my hand builds and the regular Saber Sim builds and the contest Sims kind of give you the same things, probably a good place. Um, that's just my experience with this. Let's uh, take a look and see what the TS build looks like, just the top one lineup. And yeah, this is these are the guys that I was probably, not the exact guys I was talking about, but... Um, this, this, this actually gives you one off of Matthews, which I need to do a little more research on this. I'm not sure if that's exactly optimal to play that way. So I'm not going to replace my hand built. Well, I have to because I didn't actually save that one. So I am going to replace it for now. But I might consider what I did in my earlier part of the video as, as a hand built idea instead of putting um, instead of putting Matthews in the uh, as a one off because. From what I've heard, I, I don't believe that playing the expensive one-offs up there is, is optimal. So I'm probably going to avoid that. But for now, we're going to save these. Now, it is a late uh, slate. So what I'm going to do is I think I think we're going live at seven at 6.30 for the NBA. So I'll probably put just somehow try to get hockey in there, maybe after. Uh, I'm not sure. But uh, if not, this will be the only content for the day, with the exception of the projection updates, which I will provide a little bit later on. I uh, hope you guys got something from that, and uh, good luck.